Hi, this is Greg. Look for my book, The Agile Brand, on Amazon or on my website at theagile.world. Welcome back to The Agile World. This is Greg Kilstrom. I've been talking for the last few episodes about uh, what I refer to as the Agile Brand Manifesto in my book. And I based this off of the Agile Manifesto, which was written in 2001 and really kicked off the Agile movement. A bunch of software developers put it together and, and talked about what Agile and the Agile methodology really values and, and how it differentiates itself um, or differentiated itself um, from previous methods. So I did the same thing. I kind of gave an homage in, in my book, The Agile Brand, uh, to this and, and came up with four things that I believe Agile brands need to value. The first thing I talked about, which was long, you know, valuing long-term customers over short-term sales. The second thing is valuing dialogue with customers over simply broadcasting one-way marketing messaging. The third thing, which I talked about in the last episode, is valuing staying true to, to a company's values over doing whatever they can to generate profits. And I talked about how, obviously, with a for-profit company, particularly one driven by shareholders, it's not realistic to say that you're going to make decisions solely based on values and, and not based on money. But that you can make some compromises, you can make some decisions, and that often making decisions based on values is a long-term investment in not only the company itself, but in long-term customers and even in long-term employees. In this last episode on this topic, I'm going to talk about value and continual improvement over maintaining the status quo. I think this is kind of an easy topic to talk about in, in the frame of Agile because Agile really is all about continual improvement. And unlike a, an Agile project, which may actually have a start and an end, when we talk about Agile marketing or Agile branding, there really is no end. Um, there is really just a continual series of sprints and improvement. And so, you know, embracing this idea of we are going to um, take things in a series of, of steps. So, you know, in this case, sprints, um, we are going to do some work, we're going to measure it, we're going to analyze it, and then we're going to come back at the end of the sprint and say, okay, what worked, what didn't? Um, what are we going to do? Are we going to optimize? Are we going to change anything or not? I've talked a few times about this idea of uh, continual improvement or, or being agile or nimble doesn't necessarily mean or doesn't mean that we're simply being reactive and, and making changes on a whim. But it does mean that we are committed to continual improvement. And I think a lot of companies have a hard time with this um, in practice. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's one thing to say, okay, well, we're going to watch things for a few months and see how it goes. And then, um, and then we'll kind of get things to a nice place and, you know, kind of set it and forget it, uh, if anybody remembers that infomercial. Um, but I think what what agile brands and, and really the the brands and companies of the future realize is that you know there there is nothing but change change is the only constant so in order to be relevant remain relevant we have to continually optimize there is no set it and forget it anymore there is no way that marketing works from one year to the next there are new channels there are new devices there's new platforms all of those types of things, as well as audiences change. New audiences um, have preferen have different preferences, generational preferences, life moment preferences. All of these things add up to a continual state of change. And so being agile, continually monitoring, continually um, analyzing, and continually improving is really the, the way of being. Companies that don't understand that will come to find things like, uh, you know, I, I work a lot in, in do, redesigning websites, for instance. So, you know, one, one common anecdote uh, when we're either pitching a project or starting a project is everyone says, oh, well, I don't use the website anymore. Uh, it's so out of date. I made a PDF instead and I just email people or the sales team emails people PowerPoints or PDFs instead of driving to the site because... You know, the website, that's that's how we talked about ourselves five years ago or three years ago or even two years ago. We're different than that now. To me, that's, you know, it's it's 
it's uh, amazing, to be honest, because a website in particular is something that is so easy to update. And, you know, most most modern websites, particularly for larger companies, they have content management systems that are actually designed to manage content, as you would imagine, to make changes, to to update things on the fly. So how do we get to a point where we set it and forget it and say, oh, well, you know what? It's not my job to update the content on the website, or it's not my job to modify the marketing plan. Things are going fine. We're doing, you know, we're still getting leads through the site or our social engagement is still good or, you know, you name it, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, but sure enough, you know, you let these things go and all of a sudden you look back in, in a couple of years, um, even several months sometimes, and things change so quickly at, in a, in a, any organization that, these things get out of date. And so this idea of value and continual improvement means it's not just watching it for a little while, making sure it's okay, and then letting it go. It's continually having a process in place, having a team in place, having ownership in place, and a a leadership team in place that really stresses that, okay, there is no more set it and forget it. We are, we are, there is, there is no more status quo. And I think brands that that adopt this, brands that truly embrace this, you're seeing them, uh, you know, one, another example that I use often is, you know, how often has Amazon redesigned its website? You know, the, the real answer is it redesigns its website almost every day. It's optimizing things all the time, but a true redesign, I think I, I want to say it's been almost a decade since they redesigned their homepage and there was a real substantive change. Because what they're doing instead is they're taking small steps. They're optimizing small things like, you know, the placement of buttons on product pages where recommendations are placed. If you actually look at the page design over time, you'll see that, yes, things have changed, but it wasn't overnight. All of a sudden, everything changed and then everyone's confused. I mean, can you can you imagine the disruption that would happen if you did that? I think Target actually ran into that problem several years ago when they redesigned their site. Why would you do that to your customers, um, make things such a sudden shift where everything is all of a sudden different overnight when you have loyal customers? Instead, adopt the system of continual improvement over time and customers will slowly, you know, they'll they'll gradually adopt what you what you change over time and it won't be so disruptive to the process. In the next episode, I'm going to talk through a, a case study of uh, a brand that I really feel like has adopted agile principles, both really as a brand as well as as a company and, and strategically. Thanks for listening. See you next week. If you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful, please rate the show on iTunes or contact me through my website at theagile.world. You can find my books, The Agile Brand and The Agile Web on Amazon and on my website at theagile.world.